in the last four weeks, we've been on a very exciting journey with Jimmy Sholanke through his interview with Shegun Ojewi. And today we are on the last episode of his brilliant discussion revealing this legendary actor who held the Nigerian theatre audience spellbound for over 60 years and his influence permeated television, film, stage and radio. And today we are on our last episode with him. He's been a great witness and I ask you, I'm not leaking anything, I want you to come along with us and listen to the rich baritone of Jimmy Sholanke as he recalls his lengthy career in the Nigerian theatre as a witness to history. Thanks for coming along. And they gave me the script that translated, you know, let's see what we can do with it. So I got the script, it gave me a hot drink, and sit down, you can take it home, we'll call you maybe the day after tomorrow when you're ready to put your voice on it. Everybody told us that you are the one who can do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I sat down, accepted their hospitality for some time, then I they said some, uh, somebody should lead me back to the subway. I got home, I didn't sleep. I said, yes. All these people have been hearing and reading about. I just left their presence. That's when I sat down and I started working on that first ever voice on rhythm to be made anywhere in the world. Voice on rhythm. And it was because of my dramatic uh, experiences that I could link all that with the, the beat. When I got back there, they played the beat for me. I cleaned up some aspect of what I had written. And I said, let's take it. We didn't take it the second time. There was noise in the studio. Everybody saying, ah, oh, because they said, oh, that's all right, that's all right. That's it. One take. But I wasn't very happy in New York because I couldn't go out. I couldn't. Then some people I knew in uh, Los Angeles, I started calling them. They were saying, we have some here. That's how I went to LA and began my touring theater, as I call the African Review. Even a group of people who came to meet us, to meet me on this thing and brought some things for me from LA. One of the people who came is the son of the man I left the group with, who is still running the group profitably. One of Najite, he was my drummer, but he has all the scripts. That's all he's using. <laughs> In LA, till date, the African review. But I brought some people together, you know. In how many states is it or cities? Well, uh, every Berkeley, uh, uh, I'm forgetting it now, it's about for nearly 40 years. Berkeley, I remember Berkeley very well because I did a lot of good things there. I directed two or three plays, one of their local theater house there, Berkeley. Uh, San, San, San Bernardino, and then that's the San, San Diego. And that one next to San Berkeley, Francisco. San Francisco. The, he was, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Yes, there too. But in LA, the LA schools district gave me at least in a month 100 schools to take my uh, African review to because uh, the way I plotted it, it's not just drama. It's music, it's education, it's communication, it's information. It's, it's, it's so, so, it, and I use uh, about five, six members of cast. I use only five, six members of cast. Uh, even at a point, uh, my brother Orlando Julius was working with me. At the point, uh, one Ghanaian uh, performer was in my team. Uh, then I went to, the team went to uh, the Texas, you see, UT Texas. We, we, we thought, we thought. But I came home because I don't want to be uh, uh, part of people who a woman will say, uh, you have married me and you have to be taking care of my children. And they know that's a lot of problem who there. Who is this woman? Uh, Elizabeth Wilkinson. Elizabeth. The very first show I did there, that's how we met. And she took permission from the people who brought me there that she would take me to know the town. That's how I got into trouble. What? Right? <laughs> no, uh, it started by taking me here and there, and where I she supposed to go back and uh, where they've come to take me, I wasn't allowed to go back there. Ah. And uh, because I'm a, I'm a bushman, I don't want to go into trouble. Ah, no, I can't touch you now. You know, we just met. Yeah, yeah. Say, no, no, no. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, come on. And one woman called me who saw me at that first show and said, look, be careful with our girls, so be careful with our girls. Protect your talent with your life. Don't, in less than two months or three months, this one said she was pregnant. That's the trouble. Yeah. And I didn't come there to make babies. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was your contact with the mayor? The mayor? Yeah, we perform in his office, special occasions. And uh, this particular lady, I think, works in the mayor's office and all that and all that. So I'm not even uh, concerned with that. What I was concerned with, I had the opportunity to perform, just like I was saying. So you were doing more of a Drama, poetry, music, folk songs, uh, storytelling. There are lots of write-ups which I still have on me as a storyteller. Everywhere in New York, everywhere as a storyteller. Because at the time I came back to New York when it was summer to attend to some workshops and uh, some talks about uh, uh, culture and performances. Yes. So how many years did this uh, Eventually, I came back in 1983. About eight years. I came back in 83. 83. And the minute I came back, I was showing off that I am American. <laughs> I ran into a guy, a guy saying, I can't take them, throw that back somewhere, we have work to do. <laughs> and as I got back into the Department of Dramatic Arts, he <laughs> went back to his Yes. That's how I got back to the department and we started, pa, 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 And I was lucky I was there. Because then we did uh, uh, 
A lot of them were there. I think I still met Kole Yamotocho there. I met Yemi Ogubi was still there. Uh, J for BJ was still there. Uh -huh. And uh, it was nice. And then that was uh, the uh, what's the name of this player, Nigga, the Futurologist. Yes. That was when I got a Futurologist. Mm -hmm. Myself and uh, this young film man in America, he told, uh, told you, uh, what's his name? Our. No. Uh, the Yoruba one who used to bring. Toye Koka. Niji Koka. Yes, we shared the lead role. Uh, we were double cast for uh, the futurologist. Mm. <laughs> That's and as I used to tell you, I eventually uh, you see when you've been on your own, you've been creating opportunities for work opportunities for performances. If you know how you can do it, then you are back in this situation. And I began to think then, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. am I back to square one again? And by then, I met my wife in the department. She graduated from there and she too, because I was in the acting company, she joined the acting company. Oh. The two of us again here. Yeah. So we are all tied up in the same shell. <laughs> I started thinking, well, you can do a lot than this, Jimmy. So by 1986, I just resigned. Because by then, I was itching to go out and do a lot more than uh, the department could offer me. Because I can walk from one hour to the 24th hour. If that project, if I'm passionate about that project, there's nothing stopping me. I won't, I won't blink. I won't, I won't think twice before I will work a whole day on a project, as long as it is in the area of performing arts. Uh, the Nigerian theater is, is a project that is already laid out, already stretched out, already packaged, already read, already, you know, with a format for future, future, uh, for the future. Let me just say like, is it with the format for the future. Uh, the way I see it, as I said earlier on, theater used to be a place where you can go and you know, play, <laughs> a lot of people play, you know. But suddenly, the security problems in the country, eh, around the end of the war and all that, cut everybody up from going out at night. And this is a situation where you don't do theater in the afternoon, except you do matinee in a locked up uh, theater. Uh, <laughs> it didn't stop there. But in different kind of institutions, I mean universities, the culture of theater 
still continues. Continues because in OAU, they still run theater, you know, is in within a campus. In uh, UIR, they still run it. In JAWS, they still run it. In uh, Benin, they still run theater, you know. What is keeping theater from getting out of the campuses into the uh, public, uh, public uh, states, uh, public situations and uh, uh, playhouses is we are having more and more uh, fears of the night. <clears throat> I'm telling you, theater. I, I worked 12 years with UNICEF, taking theater to the people in villages. I did not only take theater to them, sensitizing them on issues that uh, concerning them in reproductive health and child care, etc., etc. I went back there to teach. I still have teams now that I taught that are still performing for themselves. And that was the reason why MacArthur Foundation gave me a a fund for leadership development that they give professors and everybody. They gave it to me for four years, earning good and doing theater, teaching theater in the villages. And in the evenings, they will go to the uh, chief's place and perform to themselves. We, uh, I am, I'm keeping, I'm keeping my mouth close about it until it's ready. There's going to be a theater village where people will be coming to spend weekends watching different plays and enjoying the afternoon, doing a lot of definite uh, uh, entertaining uh, things and they go again to watch theater. Sleeping in nice little huts. That's why I said, that's why I use the word the future, because that's the area that I'm taking theater into. And there is still a time coming. That's why I still keep the futuristic aspect of it. There's still a time coming when we can still go out again in any part of Nigeria to watch theatrical performances. So, <clears throat> um, watching theatrical performances within the universities is a different thing from watching it outside. Yes. When it goes outside, there's a commercial you know, business you know, component. Yes. Uh, do you see uh, the environment as being conducive for of that to begin to happen? Are we on the precipice of that happening? Now? Yes. You know why it's, uh, it's already here? We are on the cliff of it. Because there are some very uh, beautiful cinema theaters now with enough security, with enough this and that, though expensive, yet people do go there. If we begin to create such uh, play halls, such drama auditoriums with fine uh, packaging, uh, security, and all that, people will come. People will come. And that's when I'll be acting again. <laughs> so for now, that you're not acting, what are you doing? Now that I'm not acting, uh, within the last uh, two, three years, 
that I have not done any of those uh, uh, village intervention drama series. I have uh, to make sure that I don't waste time. I mean, my every bit of my time must be spent. I've been writing plays under the Rocco tree, Death How Now. Uh, my play, uh, ATT, All Eyes on You, was I directed it for convocation in Wusto. And, and about five weeks ago, it was shown in the department, directed by one Awawu, a member of the staff of the Department of Dramatic Arts, OAU. And apart from that, I am creating a dramatic uh, envelope that I just create dramatic characters. I give them names. I want to create 2,000 of them that will be in one uh, gallery, not for sale, that people will be coming there to come and see this dramatic uh, and very quite innovative. I use colors called out of newspapers to do such things. What has um, what role should theater have performed in this society? Theater is the most is the closest. presence that can inform and educate people. If you are watching a good play, a good play, live play, the actors are good and the theme is packaged to send messages and you know, the feel, not like when you are watching a movie, the feel that human to human give and take of the actor and the audience, if that middle is there of the actors, and you, you, you can tell them, and it sends messages. It, it's the most uh, important uh, uh, communicant, or what do you call it, the between expressive, expressive yes, yeah, between the actor and the audience. It's most believable. It's far away from what you see in TV. What you see in TV could have been taken ten times before they choose one for you to see. But on stage, the actor must believe in what he's doing because he's not going to be caught and take again. He must be able to play the role, to send messages, to at least to impact some kind of information on you, honestly. And you will believe it hook, line, and sinker if the actor is a good one. That's what theater is all about. It's a great uh, joint between the audience and the cast. You cannot beat theater in that area, in that area of uh, uh, communication. Direct, direct. The set is built, the uh, actor is made up, the costume is there, and that's what you are there to watch as an audience. And if it's played very nicely, from that, from, from the blackout and the, and the applaud, from there, you'll be talking about the play until you get home. As you are driving home, ah, you'll be remembering one scene after the other. And that's theater. Now, can I ask you a favor? If you remember any monologues from any of the roles that you played that you can just tell. Mm. 
some birds. Some birds dread water. Ducks sleep in it. The same it is with some men. Some men dread trouble. Others court trouble. Oba Diagbo, Esasonye. Why? Why did you kill one Gebo? Hmm. Because the moon is dim. Little stars cast their scary glitter. Tonight, you all die. Google, 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 Thank you very much. You're very grateful. Thank you. Eopo, Uropo, Lafosho, Eopo, That's a testament to Jimmy Shulanke and wishing him a final goodbye from this part of the divide. We say to all family, friends and fans of Jimmy Shulanke, take heart. You will continue to meet him in the various works that he did that had been captured. He served the purpose for which he was created and you enjoyed it while he was there to do so. Until next week when we'll bring another witness to you, I want to say thank you for joining us and that you will benefit from joining the Tundilania podcast every week especially on Thursdays when we bring you a new episode. Next week we are going to be talking with a great Nigerian theatre artist too, the one we call Cousin J, that's Jari Adewon. And we will be bringing you his experiences, even though he was not trained as an actor, how he moved from a being in the accounting section to immersing himself in the theatre. He's going to be our next witness on the Tundela New York podcast. Thank you for being with us. And you can hit the subscribe bell on YouTube so that you can be told about the time any new episode comes on. And please like and share so that others can also benefit from what we bring to you. Thank you and bye.